Here at the Training Society, we're all about health and safety. So before we allow you into our working warehouse, we need to make sure you're safe. To do that, you will require a high-vis jacket that we can provide for you, and safety footwear that we cannot. If you do not have these items, you'll not be allowed into the warehouse to complete or even start the practical part of your training course. Please remember, our work area is a live working area. It may well be other courses are taking place in the same space. Do not enter this area without the supervision or permission of your trainers. A pre-use safety inspection check is an essential part of the safe operation of a forklift. Here we can see a previously completed check sheet and it's wise to find the previous check sheet because if any defects have been reported, you need to ensure they have been rectified before you start using or even checking the machine yourself. Our forklift truck is electric and there is a safe way of disconnecting from the charger. Because hydrogen gas can be generated during battery charging procedures, we always make sure that we turn off the charger at the wall first. And just to be double safe, let's unplug it too. Once you've disconnected the charge from the mains, and safely stowed the power cable, we move around to the connector here. These can be very stiff and sometimes need a bit of a wiggle to make things happen. So there's a lovely big firm handle here and here. Bit of a wiggle, sometimes they are very stiff, so a little wiggle helps. Stow that safely out the way with the charger. And this connector now plugs down to here. Now this battery lead connects to our battery supply. This goes to our forklift truck, so plugging one into the other and our forklift now has power. And just make sure the cables aren't getting caught anywhere. Before we can move our forklift, we're going to need to put the battery cover back down. On our particular truck, support the cover, seat forward slightly, make sure your fingers are out of the way, use the handle, goes back down. Make sure as we look here, the cables aren't all tangled up. Okay, they tend to have a twist in them, but I'm not too concerned about that and a brief visual check to make sure there's no obvious signs of damage or overspill on any of the battery cells themselves. Lowering the lid down on our particular truck here, one side stays live, pull that handle back, slot the handle, slot the handle, and it is now safe to mount the truck and move it to a position where we can continue with the rest of the safety checks. As we move our truck away from the park position, this would be a really good time to check there are no signs of hydraulic or other fluid leaks underneath your fork truck that may have settled since it was last used. Before we move the fork truck, we need to look everywhere around to make sure it's safe. We're going to use the up control to lift the forks from the floor. And I can't tilt it back at the moment because we're actually slightly under some racking. However, we're going to look around us. We're going to engage reverse gear. You can hear the safety bleeper. Handbrake off, good look around, move the fork truck back as far as you need to to get into a working position. Once you're clear, we're going to handbrake out of gear. And we're now going to use the back tilt to get our forks to a traveling position. And I'm now going to move the truck to an empty part of the warehouse where we can have a proper walk around check with plenty of space around us. We've now placed our fork truck in a smooth, flat, even area that is safe for us to walk around. It's well lit. We can examine things in safety. Whenever you leave your forklift truck, do remove the key. This way, only authorised operators have access to the mechanical handling equipment, in our case, the forklift. We're going to start our checks at the tip of the forks. Bad users, bad operators, Untrained and poorly trained people will what we call ground the forks out. On our lovely smooth warehouse floor here, it shouldn't be done anyhow, but if you do it outside in a rough environment on a concrete floor maybe, or they start pranging the side of vehicles or racking and these get damaged, that's really a good sign of a poor operator. All damage needs to be reported. Staying with the forks here, we travel along to what we call the heel. The heel of the forks here, as you can see, we go through a 90 degree bend. If forks are going to give way, this is a very common place. 
you overstress them, you'll see cracks appear along this area here. Whilst we're talking about the condition of the forklift truck generally, it shouldn't be covered in grease and oil. Some things do need to be lubricated, but there's no excuse for being dirty and covered in grease and oil that could hide defects that may indeed turn out to be very serious. Following a system, the next thing we need to concern ourselves with is what actually do the forks attach to? And this is known as the carriage plate. You can see here, this is the carriage plate. It has a series of notches. This is because we can adjust the width of the forks to suit different pallet dimensions. To do that, we would lift this clip here. We need the forks to be a little off the floor for this to happen. We would lift this clip here, slide the fork across to whichever one you want. And we do this on both sides, have an even load spread. Make sure the clip goes back down and that it centers into one of these little castellations. These should have nice square ends. If they're being rounded off and smooth, they've had a lot of abuse. And the danger is that in working life, you could actually have a fork that moves whilst you're transporting a load. Clearly not a safe thing to happen. Further up, we have what we call the backrest extension. This is really important. This is the thing that's going to stop things that shift falling into you. So examine it closely, look for any cracks, any defects, make sure it's not covered in grease and oil and other contaminations. It's an important part of your safety system. The next part of our fork truck we're going to look at is what the actual forks and indeed the carrier travel up and down on. This we call the mast. It's a little dark in here, um, but here we're looking at the mast section here. This will have grease on it. It's meant to be lubricated. It shouldn't look horrible. The grease should be clean. And we're looking to make sure that the mast is clean, undamaged, not obviously bent or distorted in any way, and quite frankly, looks the way you'd expect it to look. Also, whilst we're here, we can look at the chains. Now, the chains, of course, are the things that actually carry the load. So although the hydraulic piston moves the mast, the load actually hangs off of these chains. So we'll have a look at the chains, make sure that they aren't kinked, damaged, anything at all like that, that may cause us reason for concern. One of the easiest ways to check if the mast has been deformed or damaged in any ways is to stand exactly side onto it so one is hidden behind the other. As you look upwards, you should see that there is no difference and they should both stay absolutely in line all the way to the top. As we move up to the top, you will see from this side a silver part that is the ram that actually makes everything move. I'll point that out for you. It's just up here. Whilst we're looking here, this is the first of our hydraulic checks. We want to make sure that there are no weeps or seeps or other leaks of hydraulic fluid that would indicate ram failure or seal failure. Some people prefer to check both sides of the forks and chains and lift columns at the same time. So we'll check one side, then the other. Other people will go all the way around and come to this side when they're finished. I really don't mind so long as it gets done. But as we're here, we have some hydraulic connections here. These are for the side shift attachment on this particular truck. That's not part of the course we're teaching you now, and we'll cover that in another lesson if need be. What we do need to know is to make sure that it's not got anything leaking or otherwise causing us concern. As before, we look all the way up the mast, making sure it's nice and smooth, lined up with the other one, no obvious signs of cracks or damage anywhere, no obvious signs of weeps or leaks or anything else horrendous like that until we go all the way up to the top and we find ourselves back in a position where we can check the top of this lift cylinder as well. Continuing our journey around the forklift truck, we come next to the wheels and tyres. Now our forklift truck has solid tyres, but that doesn't excuse us from having a check. We need to make sure that all the wheel nuts are in place, none missing, no horrible leaks or any puddles around the vehicle, and we need to make sure the tyres are in a good condition to make sure we have got good depth all the way around with no horrible signs of any damage. Once we're happy with that wheel and tyre, we will then, of course, move around the rest of our vehicle. And as we go around, we'll look at the external condition to make sure that it hasn't received any damage. And of course, many people won't report damage. They'll just wait for you to find it and get the blame for it. 
Whilst we're at the front wheel, or one of the front wheels, we should check the falling object protection system. Some people call this a roll cage, it really isn't. It's designed to protect you should anything fall upon you. So best you have a really good look at it. Check out all of the worlds, make sure it looks undamaged, check your way all across, working your way around, moving your way down the other side of it. It's your safety, you take your time, and if you're not happy, don't use it. As we continue around our fork truck, we'll keep looking for any damage. Again, checking the last part of the falling object cage that we get here. Damage around the back. We have here a towing hook. That's an entirely different matter for us at some other point. And of course, the rear tire. This is a three wheel fork truck. These are extremely maneuverable. And we'll have a look at that to make sure it's safe. No great signs of damage. It may help sometimes if you wish to, to rotate it onto full lock one way or the other to have a closer look. We continue our tour of the vehicle to make sure everything's nice and safe. Have a look around, make sure the lid's down. And whilst we're here, of course, we're going to check that last wheel and tire to make sure we're happy with it. We're then just going to go back a little bit to look at possibly the most important part of your entire checking procedure. Unless your forklift truck can display a certificate or a sticker to prove that it has been safety checked and inspected and is in date, the equipment must not be used. No sticker, no usey. One final safety check before we even think about getting inside our fork truck is to make sure that the weight capacity data plate is there. You will see on our fork truck we have two. This is because we have an attachment, that's the side shift, and that will affect how much weight our fork truck can safely handle. So the data plate we have here explains what this truck could do if it did not have the attachment on it. And of course, there are many, many different attachments, and these are not part of a standard forklift operating course. The plate over here is the one that explains what you can do with the attachment fitted. We'll take a closer look at those later on and explain to you what it is you need to know because if you don't know what your fork truck can safely handle, you are going to put yourself and other people in danger. So again, no data plate, no use. So having had a really good thorough look around the outside of our fork truck, it's time to move to the inside. We're going to start with your operating position. Make sure the floor mat is there and undamaged, not greasy, oily, or anything else that might cause a slip, trip, or fall. As we move up, we'll have a look across to make sure the controls are in good condition. All we can see from this side is the gear select lever and of course the steering wheel. But moving across, we'll take a look at the seat. And of course, we're going to make sure that that is where it should be. Make sure it's firmly in position so it's not going to be loose or rattly on you. And whilst you're there, we can check the seat belt by pulling it across, plugging it in, quick snap to make sure it's looking to lock for you. If we're happy with that, we can put the seatbelt back. And at long last, we are ready to enter our fork truck. The very first thing you do is you enter the fork truck safely by using three points of contact. There is a handle provided for your use. We get ourselves in the operator's position and we deploy the seatbelt. Once we're in the fork truck and we have our seatbelt firmly secured. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the park brake or handbrake is applied. I don't mind what you call it, so we'll make sure that's good. And we'll make sure that the gear select position is in neutral. On our truck here, this is a very straightforward operation. We have forwards, we have neutral, we have backwards. So make sure it's in the neutral position. When you first put the key into the ignition, give it a turn and being electric, nothing too exciting happens other than on the dashboard. We get a lovely green indicator light and all the other warning lights should go out. We have two ways of warning people that our forklift is in operation. One of those is the horn. And the horn on this particular vehicle is operated by a foot switch at the end of your left foot because forklifts tend to be automatic. So your right foot is going to be brake accelerate. Your left foot is free to use on electric trucks. 
the halter, the horn, call it what you will. So, it's an important safety system, give it a try. <coughs> Happy days. Your forklift truck will also be equipped with a visual warning device, a beacon. Generally speaking, these tend to be amber, orange, I don't mind what you call it. And of course, this must be functioning. Not all forklift trucks have headlights or working lights, but ours does, so we'll test them. Now we need to make sure the handbrake is applied and that our fork truck is out of gear. And we're going to use the left lever to raise the forks to somewhere near our eye position so we can check their condition from the driving seat. Pull the lever towards you, that will raise the forks. The faster you pull, the faster it goes up. So we're just going to raise the forks until they're about level with our eyes. And that way we'll be able to see if there's any great damage. There's no rush to this, we're just taking it nice and steady until we get to about eye level. Once you're happy that the forks look nice and straight and we can check them from this position, we're going to then continue to raise the forks all the way to the top. Before you do that, it's an extremely good idea to make sure there's nothing above you that you might hit. So, the more you move the lever, the faster they go. We're in no great rush. As we raise, we're looking to see any leaks, any other problems that we couldn't see earlier on and we're all the way to the top until the forks come to a stop. When they do, you hear it change noise. And then release the lever. When you're in this position, we're going to use the center lever to move the forks forwards and backwards on the tilt to test that. So again, we go nice and gently. If we push it forward, the forks tilt forward. Make sure they do stop. When we come backwards, they'll come backwards. And again, make sure they do stop. If we're happy with that, we move back to the center position. Nice and steady. And then we slowly lower the forks by pushing the left lever all the way forwards. No need to be too violent with this. These come down by gravity you'll see the cables are rolling themselves up quite nicely. We come down nice and gently, all the way down, until we end up approximately five to six inches off the floor with our forks. So again, there's no rush to this, nice and gentle. And we should stop with our forks about five or six inches off the floor. If you think it's a little bit too high, you can always lower it just a little bit more. Once we've done that, we then use the center control pulled backwards, and that will put the forks into what we call ride position or travel position. And that's where we need to be before we then start moving the fork truck around to test that the brakes and accelerator work. So once you're happy that everything is good so far, the last thing we need to do is actually move the fork truck so that we can check the operation of the steering, the brakes and the accelerator. At the end of the last clip, you saw us leave the forks in the travel position. So the heel of the forks should be around six inches, 15-ish centimeters from the floor, and the tips should be pointing up. In other words, back tilt applied. The idea behind this is if we do crash into a pedestrian, we are going to damage uh, the lower leg bone rather than the ankle. And gruesome though that may sound, it is much easier to fix a broken shin than it is to fix a broken ankle. We're happy everything's nice and safe. We've checked that we have an in-date inspection. We know what the vehicle can move, and we're happy that everything functions as it should, other than the moving. So, we use a system called GOBO, which is gears, observation, brake, observation. You will be fed up of hearing that by the time this course is finished. So, GOBO, gear, now, I like to have my foot on the foot brake before we even do that because I'm a safety freak. Gear, push the lever forwards. On an electric truck, nothing normally happens when you go forwards. It just goes into the forwards gear. Handbrake at the ready. So, observations. We need to check all around us to make sure it's safe to move our truck where we're going to be moving it. Four points absolutely everywhere, all around your fork truck, and please remember to look up 
because you may be going into an enclosed space with a doorway and we know what happens if fork trucks hit doorways. So if we're happy with everything, we have one hand on the steer assist, that's the, the sort of rotating knob on the steering wheel. So we've done the gear, we've observed, we take the part brake off. Before we move any more, we have another final check around to make sure our safe area is available to us. And we gently squeeze the accelerator to move forwards in a straight line. And without going too fast, let's try the brakes. So the brakes should clearly stop us. If we're happy that forward motion works nice and safely, we'll select reverse gear. There is no need to go handbrake between these two operations. My foot is still covering the foot brake. Neutral, reverse, that will put on the reversing beeper. Happy days. So, observations, look around, make sure it's perfectly safe. And when we're going backwards, we look backwards. You will spend most of your life looking backwards. So, we're in gear, we've had a look around, the brake's off, we look around again, gentle application of the accelerator, looking in the direction of travel. We don't need to go terribly far, we just need to check the brakes work. Cool. If you're happy with that, we apply the handbrake, out of gear. So handbrake first, out of gear. What we're going to do now is check the steering works and we're just going to go for a little figure of eight. So this truck will literally spin on its own length. We're just gonna go for a figure of eight forwards and a figure of eight backwards to satisfy ourselves that everything works. So we'll start with the forwards. So gobbo, gear, observation, make sure your work area is safe. Brake, observe, make sure your area is safe. Again, pay attention to up. As we move then, we're going to figure of eight. So gentle on the accelerator, we can apply full steering. The fork truck will turn around pretty much on its own spot. So we'll go one way, checking around you as you go for the towel swing. We go around all the other way, checking around you for the towel swing. We take our time. This is not a speed trial we get back to where we should be. If we're happy that's worked, we use the brake to bring us to a stop. We select reverse, the beeper should sound. We've got the gear, we look around, we check the brake, we observe. We look in the direction of travel. So, we go, we turn around, we change our side of looking because that's the way we're going. Keeping looking all around you, still look at our direction of travel, rotating the other way, looking where you're going. I know that sounds obvious, but you really should be doing it. As we come around, we'll straighten up again. Constant observation. Bring the fork truck to a nice straight line. Move it forward if you wish. And once we're happy with everything, we apply the park brake. We take it out of gear. We tilt the forks all the way forwards by using the center lever. Push that all the way forwards. And then we just lower the forks. They just about touch the floor. That's where we leave our fork truck parked. So we'll make sure the fork tips are touching the floor. The heels of the forks are on the floor. The handbrake is applied. We're out of gear. We take the key out. We take the key with us. We do not leave keys in unattended fork trucks. We take our safety belt off. And before you exit the fork truck, make sure it is safe for you to do so. There may well be other vehicles in the area. We use the hand for the three points of contact. We observe to make sure it is safe to dismount our truck. If it is safe, we dismount our truck. And that concludes the basic walk round and safety checks. And finally, one very important thing too many people overlook. If it wasn't written down, it didn't happen. Make sure you complete and sign as appropriate the check sheet. We hope you've enjoyed this video and it's explained to you the importance of safety checks and how to carry them out. We cannot stress enough, if you're not happy, not confident, or you find a problem, stop, report it to your supervisor. And as we saw in the last clip, if your safety checks weren't written down, they didn't happen. Thank you.